Hello and welcome to Jenkins Pipeline Environment Variables Explained video. I noticed that many people run into some problems when they work with Jenkins Environment Variables. I wrote a comprehensive blog post about this topic some time ago and I can tell you that every week a few thousand people search for only this specific issue. After watching this video, I can promise you that n variables won't surprise you anymore. Interested? Let's dive into it. Let's start with listing all environment variables. So every Jenkins installation has this page called nvvars HTML. If you open it in your Jenkins installation, you will see this list of environment variables with some short explanation. You can find variables like build ID, job name, a job base name, build URL, Jenkins URL, and a few others here. This is not the full list, but we can also see some of these variables in the pipeline. So let's create a simple stage in our pipeline where we will call print env sorted alphabetically. Okay, I can apply this here and we can run our pipeline to see the list of all available n of variables in this specific Jenkins instance. Now let's see how we can use those variables in our pipeline. So let's add a new stage here and I can show you how you can use those variables. So let's start with using those env variables from the Groovy interpreter side. So in echo step, I can pass Groovy string and let's say I want to display build number. Okay. So in this case, I can use Groovy variable inside this Groovy string and I can say env build number. One thing worth mentioning, this env here is optional. However, it's good practice to make this information explicit. So you know that this build number is expected to be taken from environment variables. Here we are using double quotes. So Groovy will do its interpolation, its Groovy variable, it will be interpolated in this place. We can also use those n variables in shell process. However, keep in mind that in this case, we want to use single quotes for simplicity because I want to do some echo like a build number and we can access it with dollar sign build number. In this case, there is no n of prefix, as you can see. This is just shell environment variable access. Let's apply it and see how it works. So here the Groovy interpolation happened and here we can see that shell process also used and variable correctly. Now let's see how we can set environment variables. So there is a block called environment that we can put at the top pipeline level. Any environment defined at this level will be available to any stage uh, in this pipeline. So let's say I want to define username Joe and user ID 42. Okay. And now we can use those environment variables, let's say in this second stage. So I will do current user is. There is also one thing worth mentioning if it comes to setting and variables. Every environment variable is always cast to string. So even though I set 42 integer value here, this user ID is a string value. And let me show you this. We will run this example. And you will see current user is Joe, current ID is 42, but its type is Java lang string. 
We can also define environment block at stage level. So let's say I want to define user path home Joe here and we can also try to And we can see that current user path is home Joe. The third way to set environment variable is using an var variable directly in a script block. So here we can access env variable like that, and we can define, let's say, user group. And we will say it's like users. And let's display it. here, or actually we will use a sage to echo it. So you can see that the underlying shell also has an access to this environment variable. And the fourth way to set up environment variable is using with env block. Here we can define a list of environment variables as strings. So the syntax is the following. Let's say I want to define user password is secret. And let's define another one. User is admin false. Okay. And we can use echo. And let's use a sage. typo here and let's run this example you can see that current user group is users so we set up user group here directly on this env variable inside a script block and we can see that we could use it in shell here we set those two and variables using with env block and we can see current user password is secret and user is admin is set to false as expected. Now when we know how to set environment variable, let's see how we can override existing variables. There are some limitations here. Any variable defined in the pipeline environment block can be overridden in the local stage environment. So I can say user ID is 32, and this va variable will simply override the, the variable from the pipeline level environment. However, if I try override, let's say, username with a script block and direct access to env variable, let's say to Adam, this won't work. Let me show you, I will just move it here and you will see that the current user is Joe. But there is one way to override any variable and this is with env block. So for instance, if we define username here to Bob, then I can see this new username here. So let's apply those changes and see how it works. So as you can see here, current user is Joe. This is printed from this line. So when I tried to override username in a script block, it didn't work. But then when I did it in with env block, username was overridden, but of course its scope was limited because this username Bob, this environment variable exists only in this specific scope. And if it comes to user ID, well, we can take a look. User ID is 32. So this variable was overridden at the stage level and environment block. Now when you know that every variable is of string type, 
You need to be careful when you try to store boolean-like value in n variables. Let me show you it by example. Let's say we want to control execution of the next stage with some n variable. So we can call it trigger next. Let's say true. And uh, here we will add new stage something when block uses expression to define if this state should be executed or not. And we execute it only if trigger next is true, okay? And we will just echo something. Let's apply it and let's run the pipeline and see how it works. Of course, something was not triggered. This is not what we expect. But it happens because here, trigger next is ex actually something like this. This is not a Boolean value. We could solve it by making this explicit cast Boolean. And now if we try to run it, we should see something executed. This is one way. But there is also alternative way and this will be probably much simpler to see that there is a uh, bug in our code. We can use an environment where we use name trigger next. This is like specific uh, when condition with value if we say true. And now let's take a look what happens. If we do this and we execute our pipeline it fails immediately because expecting string for parameter value but got true of type boolean. So it quickly informs us what is the problem, right? So if in this case, if we do this, we automatically need to go here and make this value also of type string. Let's run it. And now something stage shows up as expected. And in the final tip, I want to show you how you can capture the output from other steps like shell step, for example, and store it in a variable. So let's say in this something, we have environment block. And let's say we have some, I don't know, like account files. And we want to use shell step. What I'm going to do is I will just list temp files. Let's detail them this way. And we can count how many files I have in the uh, temp folder. OK, and we can echo. There are in temp folder. OK, this is what I want to do here. Let's run it. And we can see it says null. Why does it happen? It happens because shell step by default, it does not return anything. So we need to change it to script and return std out set to true. Okay, now we can do it. We can run it. And now we should see how many files I have in temp folder 34. Of course, as you can see, there is some white space here, we can get rid of it. So here we can call trim function. And now when we execute this example, we will see correct. There are 34 files in temp folder files is missing, of course. But in some circumstances, sh step is not the case here. But in some circumstances, you can have some function and that returns null. And you need to take care of null values as well. So let's say we have some value that comes from some function. Okay. And now take a look what happens here. Echo some value is of type and I will do this. Okay. Let's run it. And you can see it says some value is null of time class 
java lang string right so this is not null value this is just a four character string that says null this might be problematic in some cases so we need to find a way how to deal with it in groovy there is elvis operator so let's see if if we can use it we run it and it fails because elvis operator cannot be used in this place there is one workaround for that of course we cannot use use it in this assignment but we can use it inside groovy string so we can use groovy string we can insert variable inside the groovy string and we can use this elvis operator safely here what will happen now is we will get this null value here but instead of creating a string that says null we will assign an empty string and if you assign an empty string to any n variable this for jenkins it means that you want to unset this variable so it will disappear now let's run this example and see how it works now you can see some value is null of type null because this sum of all environment variable does not exist when we assigned to it an empty string and that's all for today i hope you find this video interesting i hope you have learned something new from it if you want more videos like this please leave me a comment in the comment section below and hit that like button see you in the next video